Danny, can you pass out the deal sheets? Before we start, big shout out to Financial Edge who are doing a massive Black Friday 50% off site-wide deal. You can find out more using the link in the video description. I'll tell you a bit more about them later on in the video, but without any further ado, let's get into reaction for episode two, season two of Industry. Let's go. Yeah. Shall we order? It's polite to wait. So we'll wait. Any chance we could tempt you on a tour of the floor? Oh, I'm not. So, uh, Harper has decided to go to this town hall instead of going to a breakfast that she's got with a client. Don't ever do that. Don't. That's just stupid. She didn't even email her boss to say that she's going to be missing the breakfast. She just decided not to show up. Um, if you do that, you're going to you can expect to get fired quicker than anyone in the world. Like it's just stupid. You don't do something like that. Poor communication particularly geared towards making you look like a rock star in the desk. Uh, just a car, please. He wants to show you how many screens he has. Well, Bloomberg did actually just hit me up with a six one to rig. That was great. By the way, we've just published our macro year head predictions. I'm sorry. Oh, Do you have any man. Idea? I hate people who, when you go to these conferences, there's always one or two people trying to just pitch, 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 go into sales mode, showing off whatever it is. It's just annoying. Um, yeah, it just don't be that person. There's primary coverage on Maxim's fund. I've done a lot of work with Future Dawn partners, um, lots of flow slash execution stuff, but I would love to learn more about private wealth management. Flow, you almost make that sound delicious, and the people. So, as you can see, uh, she's in private wealth management. The office is a lot, um, it looks more like prestigious, more warm, more cosy. Uh, there's like you know, flowers and all of that compared to the traditional trading floor. And the reason for that is because in private wealth management, you know, your clients are high net worth individuals, ultra high net worth individuals, wealthy people. And whenever they're coming to the office, they don't want to be, you don't want to welcome them into some um, grimy, messy trading floor. You want to welcome them into, you know, a nice part of the bank because you're going to be whining and dining them. Um, and it's more of a bespoke service rather than a transactional service like the sales and trading business. They're fine. Sorry, but um, what you'd expect, you know, in line. It's ugly work, market facing roles. There's nothing elegant in that part of the business. They imagine they hate you. Yeah. I and also, you have to uh, kind of know what your strengths are. Uh, and where you, which part of the investment bank you're more suited for. So Yasmin, in this case, you know, she realizes she's not into markets. She's not suited for the markets environment. Um, she's not very, maybe she's not very good at it. Um, and she's more suited to being in private wealth management. Um, and so for you, if you're ever interning or working in any part of an investment bank, ask yourself, you know, is this the right space or place division for me? Um, and then explore, talk to different people in different parts of the bank and then you might find a part of the bank that is more suitable for you and your skill set as opposed to just being somewhere because you've ended up there. All right, before we get back to the video, I want to talk to you a bit about today's video sponsor, Financial Edge. So for those of you that don't know about Financial Edge, they host the training for analysts and associates for the top four global investment banks. They have courses, online courses on topics ranging from investment banking to asset management to sales and trading, so on and so forth. And the best bit about it, each of their courses go extremely in depth. They have been sponsoring videos on my channel for about three plus years. Uh, so I've worked with them quite a bit and I couldn't recommend them enough to anyone watching this video who wants to get into or who wants to learn more about investment banking, asset management, sales and trading, portfolio management, etc., etc. Go on their website. The link is in the video description down below uh, to find out more. Now, more importantly for you, they're running a 50% off Black Friday deal. So if you hit the link in the video description down below, you get access to the website. It's a site-wide discount of 50% off. Their instructors are ex-industry professionals ranging from companies like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, so on and so forth. And so you can rest assured when you're jumping on a Financial Edge course, you're gonna get high quality content from experienced professionals. So with a lot of their online degrees or online courses, you can, once you complete them, you get like a micro degree or you get a certificate and that you can put on your LinkedIn 
uh, which shows that you've kind of gone through this process of learning about a certain topic. Anyway, check out Financial Edge using the link in the video description below and make sure you take advantage of the Black Friday 50% off. If you're watching this after their Black Friday offer ends, make sure you use the code AFSAL25 to get 25% off on all of their online courses. With that, let's get back to the reaction. The company is Rycan Healthcare, leader in the telemedicine space. Last year created a Pricey need. healthcare subscription service. Remote doctors. Helps rich people get medical access without even the Chelsea Muse House. Now we have exclusively negotiated with one of these firms to apply their blocks, a 3% discount placed with their clients. Uh, so interesting dynamic there. So obviously Eric, he's probably the most senior person in that room. He stood up to talk and then all the other guys uh, just jumped in and started talking about the company that they own stock for. Uh, it's kind of showing that his power is diminishing. Um, and, you know, in some industries, if you're not producing results, or in this industry, if you're not producing results, uh, or there's other people who are extremely bright and switched on, they might jump in and you can't really say anything because they are speaking. Um, it's based on merit, right? They, they are smart enough to talk and hold their own. Um, and so you kind of, it's a constant battle of um, being on top of your game, managing that power dynamic. And, you know, as a senior person, you don't want like the junior people to come ahead of you and then surpass you uh, in Eric's case. Also current situation, they've got a ton of stock for this company called Rykan Health and they're gonna try and offload that and sell that. Uh, so let's see how that plays out. Danny, can you pass out the deal sheets? That's a power move right there. So Eric's just giving him the deal sheets to pass out, just to say, you know, you do as I say. Yeah, I don't want you calling him anymore. Actually, let's be unequivocal. You are not to call Felon, and if he calls the desk, you're not to answer. You set a meeting with a sensitive client and bail. What is she expecting? Like, she's lucky she's not getting like even worse treatment because yeah, he's he's telling her you took the Mickey. You set, set up a client meeting and you didn't even turn up. You didn't even let me know. Forget bad business practice. That's bad manner, straight up. For a third year analyst, I gave you a super privileged position and you shit the bed. How can you even ask for a sales credit split? So for those of you that are wondering what a sales credit split is, it's kind of in the term. It's if you win business, you split the credit for that business uh, with the people that you are working on that client with. So in this case, Eric and Harper might have split the sales credit. He's saying to her, how can you even ask for a sales credit split when you do stupid things like that? Kenny's in a breakfast meeting with an actual FX client. Don't take the piss. I was linking up different parts of the bank. You know, one peer point. Plots, schemes, career machinations, whatever. File them all the way and are not on my time. That's a good point. Um, do what you got to do for your career, but don't do it under your boss's time. Do it earlier before the day starts or do it after hours. Do it on your lunch, uh, but don't, you know, do it when you're meant to be on the desk. Put it back on. <laughs> Eric's basically trying to put him in his place. Another power move. He's telling him, put your tie back on. Uh, just trying to assert his dominance and power in that hierarchy. There's a lot of egos in the world of banking, um, so don't be surprised if you come across this. But there's also a lot of nice people, so you know, it works both ways. All right, so this scene is pretty weird, yeah. In the beginning when he did, when this Jesse Bloom investor did the talk at the town hall, he said to a guy, you know, he's gonna be playing tennis with his son, uh, he's got a patch in Highgate, blah, blah, blah. So Harp has gone and turned up I think it's a weekend or something. Um, she's turned up to this tennis training. It's a bit stalkerish, it's a bit weird. I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's an invasion of privacy. Uh, I get it, she's going above and beyond for the client. In the end, she's likely gonna win the client, make him some money, whatever. But it's a bit over the top stalkerish. If you don't have that connection or relationship with a client, you shouldn't be um, out of office hours going to, or even during office hours, going to invade their privacy and personal life. Yeah. Am I supposed to be charmed by this? <laughs> Sorry, I can imagine what this looks like, but uh, you did say where you were going to be. Okay, can you not? Because that's 
borderline behavior. You asked for something material, I'm bringing you something material. It's exactly the kind of post-pandemic play that you like. Exciting intel. If you're not following or if you're wondering what's going on here, basically uh, Harper's team, so Rishi, uh, he's got a lot of stock of a company that he needs to sell. He got it at a good price, he needs to get rid of it. Um, because there's going to be an event in the market or related to that company. Um, I'm not too privy to all the details. Anyway, they need to offload that and they need a lot. They need clients to buy it, right? They need to sell that to the clients. So Harper's team, the CPS team, cross product sales. So the sales team, they need to find clients to sell that to. Eric is trying to sell it to Felim, who's a big client they've already got, but Felim is having um, second thoughts because there's no lead uh, client or lead buyer. So oftentimes what happens is before one client commits, they wanna know there's other big clients involved so they can be like, all right, let's say uh, Warren Buffett is gonna buy a block of those shares. If Warren Buffett's doing it, then I'm gonna do it as well. But if there's no Warren Buffett or no lead buyer in the uh, sale of those shares, uh, actively gonna uh, purchase, then everyone else is gonna have you know shaky feet. They're gonna be like, there's no big name buying, so why should I? Everyone's kind of holding off buying. Um, and so Harper is going to Jesse Bloom to try and get him involved, uh, but he's waiting for someone else to buy as well. So let's see what happens. Gosh, all the gold miners actually went bust. People keep bringing me these vaccine plays, the gold, which is actually not worth that much. I'm interested in the picks and the shovels. The people who sold those, they were the ones who came out on top. It's quite a good analogy. No longer has an anchor. Ah, right, interesting. So she said it's no longer got an anchor, meaning the key buyer kind of dropped out. And so she wants him to come in as an anchor. The benefit of him coming in, coming in as an anchor, i.e. being that big name, buying a lot of the block, is he gets to dictate a bit of the price. He gets to get a bit more of a discount on the price of each share. Um, so that's the incentive for him. But the risk obviously is what if he's buying into a product that doesn't perform well, uh, is overpriced. Uh, so there's a lot of risk um, and reward at play. Let's make that you. Is there a specialist interest? Anna Futured On, not yet confirmed, but looks likely she already owns it, is looking to add. Nobody's participating without a specialist interest. What's your boss say? So the specialist interest is what I was referring to in terms of, you know, a Warren Buffett, a big name. Uh, specialist interest, i.e. someone who knows the industry, um, if they've got good conviction, then typically other people will follow. Uh, so he's inquiring about the specialist interest. Once their specialist interest and he's convinced, then he'll likely buy as well. Rich. He's gonna call. Eric, it's right to act alpha when we deliver alpha. Ooh. Okay, but this is cut behavior, and I do not like cuckoldry. Okay, okay, look, let's operate from this basis. Felim is out, and is unresponsive. Rishi's about to get on with a block of paper. What's the strategy if we leave from there? So right now, they've got no one to sell uh, the stock to, so everyone's stressing. And obviously Rishi, especially, because he's the trader, he's holding all this, it's under his name. Uh, and it's the salespeople's jobs to kind of get the clients to buy this stuff. So it's high pressure, pressurized environment, very stressful. How essential you are. What have you learned about our friend Anna and her interests? Uh, I'm close, I'm close to my holding. Yes, I know that I always say that this is a matter of urgency, but this really is a matter of urgency. And I'm really sorry that I'm always in such... So Harper's gone and called Jesse Bloom and now it's an intense moment. If you can, hit the link below to see the full episode um, because obviously I'm not gonna do all of it on this. You should check it out. Um, but intense, she's trying to move the paper to Jesse Bloom. I can with you, but I really need your help. I need access to Anna now. Jasmine, good to hear from you. Miss having her natter. Same, same. Let's build a phenomenal comp night out, see. Fine, but you choose the place. I never get these things right. Look, I know you don't like speaking to people you don't know, but I have half a stand from cross product sales and I could... This is a good example of why good internal networks are important. If you've got good relationships with people you work with, not just in your team, but other teams as well, it's beneficial because in this situation, Harper, she doesn't have a good relationship with Yasmin, but in the time of need, Yasmin is sorting her out. Uh, and you know, the team is gonna appreciate that Yasmin is doing that. And so, you know, being on good terms with people, people in other teams is beneficial. And here's a classic or clear example of that. 
but happy to field a quick question as a favor to Yasmin. Yes, we have a mismatched FX trade that my back office is having trouble getting in contact with yours to confirm. We booked Pierpoint buys 250 mil quid at 136.62 value spot. That direction is right, but the notional is wrong. I specifically bought 250 million dollars, which I intend to put to work. Oh, she's smart, she's smart. She didn't say to the client, are you gonna buy da 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 da. She said there was an issue in the back office operations with your purchase and she made up a little number that was incorrect on purpose to see that the client actually corrected her, which meant that yes, the client, the specialist interest is buying uh, the Reich and Health shares. So she played a smart one there. She used her intuition. Um, she used her, you know, she was thinking fast on the spot. And oftentimes in these environments, you need to be like that. Um, and they test you on these kind of things in interviews. They might put you on the spot by asking you a random question in the interview, like how many light bulbs are there in the UK, for example. And then you need to think out loud and show them that you can think on the spot, think fast to solve a problem or to come up with an idea or solution. Anyway, so she, she played a smart one there. Let's see what happens next. These things happen. Anna isn't in the book yet, but she is buying at the open. How can you be sure? Her flagship fund is sterling denominated. When she wants to buy a US asset, she has to raise the dollar. She's going to use it to buy the stock guarantee. Okay. How much stock does your trader have now and where is it? How much do you have? So now the next skill at play, this is a good scene, man. It's, it's good, uh, is negotiation tactics. How she's managing that. Uh, how she's gonna, you know, liaise with her trader uh, and the client in order to get the best offer for the firm and, you know, the client. Have and what's the offer? Harper, if you click me out of a phone call while executing, you will never hear from me again. Oof. I'm stuck with 50 million, the last trade price was 45. I can sell you all 50 million at that price. All right, tell him I know his order book is when the market opens in 30 seconds. I will take 50 million at 44, not 45. Running. So the client is leveraging his position of power he has bargaining power, right? The market is gonna open, Rishi's under stress uh, because, you know, the, the guy knows that Rishi's book needs to, isn't in the best position, let's say. And so he's taking advantage of that. He's trying to get the best discount for the purchase. And you over. Rishi, he's 44 bit. 44, is he mad? This is the best thing in the sector. It's already at discount. My price is 45. Tell him if he likes it so much, he can fucking keep it. <laughs> he says if he likes it so much, then you can keep it. Said. He says, if you like it so much, then you can f***ing keep it. <laughs> this is it's a good scene. Um, yeah, check out the whole episode. This guy, Jesse Bloom, he's a billionaire investor. He knows what he's doing. He made billions um, prior or during the COVID pandemic. You know, he's obviously fictional, but there are people out there like him. Um, so he's not stupid. He's going to do it. Like he said, Rishi wanted to sell 50 or was going to sell 50. Now he's saying, I'll take 75 mil for even a bigger discount. 5 million at 44 and a half. 75, I've only got 50. This'll take me short of that. Okay, Jesse, how about this? Why don't we do 50 now and we'll leave a working order for 25 more after the open. Thinking on her feet, creating a solution. That's good. That works. That's interesting. So one minute you could be fighting with people, next minute they'll, you know, respect you and congratulate you. Cause look, she proved herself in the time that she needed to. When the, when everything got a bit mad, she pulled through. 50 million at 44 and three quarters. Yours. 50 million at 44 and three quarters. Done. Bye. Who taught you to fish? Hey. Really good shit. Really good fucking shit, Alba. Yeah, when everything got mad, she pulled through. Don't forget, you know, the world of banking, finance, all of that is a results driven industry. If you can prove yourself and consistently uh, produce results, then people will respect you and you'll climb faster than people who don't produce results. So as you can see on the trading floor, there's gonna be lots of highs. You're gonna feel on top of the world, exhilarating, you know, managing a pressurized environment. It's gonna be a good feeling if you handle it well. And then I'm sure in the next episode, there'll be a crash. And then there's an up and a down, as with many careers, as with life, right? I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. That was the reaction to episode two of Industry Season 2. I'll link the episode down in the video description down below. But don't forget, make sure you take advantage of the first link in the video description below, which is 50% off Financial Edge's online courses. And it's actually a site-wide discount of 50% off for Black Friday. Hit that link, take advantage of it, and I'll see you likely next week in the next video. Peace.